Hey, Josh Powers with Polygon Flow, and today we're going to break down how I created this environment in Unreal 5 with the help of Dash, your co-pilot to world building. So let's dive into this one. Because the scene is exclusively man-made, I decided to create modular assets that I can snap together to lay out my scene. These assets are modeled on the grid so I can use the grid snapping in the editor to quickly assemble my environment. There are numerous ways you could go about building a scene like this, but I feel like the speed and flexibility of using modular assets, at least as a starting point, is a terrific way to build out your scene. I also created an atlas texture using Substance Painter that I was able to not only leverage for my wall and ceiling pieces, but also some of the secondary props in the scene. Atlas texturing can be done manually, or by using hotspot texturing plugins that have become more popular recently in games like Half-Life Alex and The Last of Us. This allows me to create endless variations of different wall and ceiling panels using just one texture set. Alright, with the base layout of my scene finished, I need to start blocking out my lighting. I had several references for the kind of lighting I wanted in this scene, so I'll start by adding a rect light since the lighting source assets will follow this kind of lighting very closely. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to use Dash's content library to drag in one of these Megascans props. And then I'm going to tweak the lighting position a little bit so that the light source itself doesn't impact the prop. Because the Megascans asset doesn't come with the fluorescent tubes we need, I'll use the Dash prompt bar to create a cylinder asset, and then I'll scale it into the right size to mimic the light tubes we want for these particular props. Once that's feeling good, I'm going to drag on a simple material with an emissive. Because of Lumen, this will also brighten up the interior of the prop to truly look like the fluorescent tubes are giving off light. We'll come back later and really finesse the bulbs, but for now they look good so we'll just go ahead and add this ominous red light at the end of the hallway and then move on to propping out the scene. For most of the props, I'm able to place assets from the Megascans library through Dash's content library. This dynamic approach to placing assets makes my job a whole lot faster and, if I'm being honest, more enjoyable. Using the hotkeys when placing assets makes it a completely effortless job and my mind remains in the focused creative zone. I don't have to think about what axis I'm on to quickly move, rotate, and scale. Instead, I just imagine where I want the asset, what position it should be in, and then I can quickly move on to the next asset. It seems like a trivial improvement at first glance, but it's incredible what kind of impact it's had on my experience as an environment artist, and I never want to go back to the old way of asset placement. I also utilize Dash's physics tool to help me scatter some of the more chaotic elements of the scene. Not only does this tool save me a tremendous amount of time over hand placing each asset, but it also gives end results that are much more natural and organic looking. Plus, let's admit it, it's really fun too. For the cable strewn about on the ground, I used Dash to quickly draw some curves at a lower sample rate. And then with the curve selected, I just wrote two pipe in the prompt bar, which will give the selected curve thickness. I can then play with some of the settings until I get the results I'm going for and then move on. It's so fast and easy to use. Between the mega scans and custom props I created, I was able to get the scene most of the way there. However, I also took advantage of a few asset packs from the Unreal Marketplace to add a bit more terror to the scene. These are some really great assets for your horror project, so if you want to check them out, we'll link to everything I use from the Marketplace in the description. I wanted this scene to scream chaos, and while we've achieved a lot of that with general prop placement, the floor itself needs some attention still, and I can quickly achieve this by using Create and Scatter Mesh cards in the Dash prompt bar. This lets me choose an Atlas Opacity map from my local drive, and then it'll create individual mesh cards for each of the elements of the Atlas texture, and then it'll scatter them around all the assets I had selected. From there, I can just adjust their scatter properties like any other scatter instance until I'm happy with the results. To add a bit more detail to the floor, I'll add some small pebbles to simulate general debris from wear and tear as well as little things that might come in on the bottom of boots or equipment over the years of use. 
I want to keep this effect somewhat subtle, so I'll make sure the overall scale of this scatter is quite small, and then I'll also utilize the proximity masking feature to limit the majority of the scatter to be along the walls and other props along the wall. Then I'll just re-add some of them back towards the middle of the path, just so that it's not so perfectly limited to the walls. The horror nature of this scene requires some blood, which was achieved through decals. Placing these decals with dash makes it a breeze. I'm quickly able to fill my scene with a myriad of decals through the content library by simply dragging them into the scene and using Dash's dynamic placement tool to move, rotate, and scale the decals in the scene to really help paint the picture of terror I'm going for. In addition to the blood, I'm able to add other elements such as cracks and damage on the ground, as well as some grime and grunge along the walls. For the puddles in the middle of the hallway, I simply made a duplicate of one of the blood decal materials and then used the material adjustment tool from the dash prompt bar to shift the hue, saturation, and brightness, which gives us more of a puddled water look instead of blood, which saves me the trouble of making a completely new decal. All right, we've now reached the polishing phase where we can spend time on the little touches that'll help add drama and story to our scene. For example, I have a lot of blood decals on this wall here, but the geometry is the same as every other panel of this type. So I'll switch it out with a unique instance of this wall panel that has some dented and bent up geometry, as well as a dented up normal map too. I can also apply this dented material to other wall panels along the corridor to help with the visual interest and break up any repetition. Even without geometry changes, it does a great job with the glancing light and reflections coming from the end of the hall. From here, it's just a matter of tweaking some of the materials, adding some additional atmospheric elements such as some Niagara effects I got from the marketplace, and adding some various states of conditions to the lights in the scene, including some flickering lights, some dimmed ones, as well as some that are fully burnt out. You can grab these materials from a link in the description below, but in future versions of Dash, we'll include them natively so that you can quickly add these materials to your scene. And there you have it. With the help of Dash, I was able to build this scene in Unreal Engine without ever needing to leave my creative zone. Then, using the level sequencer in Blender, I was able to animate this cinematic to create the final video. I hope this video was helpful in helping you not only understand how to leverage Dash, but also gave you some insights into world building inside Unreal 5 in general. Be sure to head over to our Discord channel and join in on the great discussions and artwork being shared by our incredible community each and every day. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.